Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio, where today we are joined by Anders Monsen, CEO of Onco Event. This is a company that's active within cancer treatment, something that Anders will tell us more about. Welcome, Anders. Thank you so much. So let's start there. Very briefly, what what is Onco Invent? Yeah, very briefly, Onco Invent is a, a pharmaceutical company based in Oslo. It's privately held. It's backed by venture capital, and it specialises in radio pharmaceuticals, which is a very interesting area in oncology right now, and an area that attracts a lot of interest from big pharma and from investors. If we go to Onco Invent specifically, our lead product is called Radsvirin. It's an alpha emitter radiation pharmaceutical, and it is used uh, in connection with surgery in body cavities. So first there is cancer removal surgery, and the idea is to use this as a complement to eradicate micrometastases that the surgeon could not see and therefore could not remove. So the primary aim of this is obviously to prevent further cancer recurrence and as such increase the survival chances for these patients. So that's the aim, but how does it work? What's the mechanism of action? Yes, I, I think I'll show you in a slide here. So uh, radsvirin is microparticles which are made of calcium carbonate and primed with radium-224 as the radiation source. This is instilled into the peritoneum, the, uh, the uh, body cavity in the abdomen area and it is instilled as a solution in which these particles are dispersed. And the catheter is obviously left behind already at the time of the surgery. So when it's instilled in this body cavity, the patient is slightly tilted left and right and up and down so that the solution distributes as much as possible and as evenly as possible across the peritoneum. And these particles uh, then attach uh, to the surface areas inside the uh, peritoneum and then they execute their radiation. So uh, the uh, idea is to eliminate all the micrometastases that, again, the surgeon couldn't remove uh, because he couldn't see them. They're very small, of course. But they are still lethal because uh, they grow and they can, they can uh, spread further. And after uh, the particles have lost their ability to radiate, there's a half-life half of radium-224 of 3.6 days. So after a few days, the treatment is no longer effective. And then the calcium carbonate based carrier material is absorbed by the body and is greeted naturally. A few points that are to be made on this slide is that alpha radiation, which is the type of radiation uh, which is characteristic from these particles, it is very high energy. So it is very effective at breaking the DNA chains of these cells. So it's very good at, at eradicating these cells but it also has a very short range in body tissue, only a few cell layers deep or 0.1 millimeter deep. So it avoids reaching other areas of the body or other healthy tissue underlying the outmost surface area that you're trying to radiate here. Uh, and of course, another point in terms of safety is that we use this as a local installation through the catheter. We don't send this through the blood circulation. It's not a systemic administration, which of course means that we don't send radioactive material circulating in the bloodstream. So there's a, another safety aspect there. And if we look at relevant indications, what type of cancers can you target with this? Yeah, if we focus on the peritoneum, which we do initially here, metastasis in the peritoneum typically originate from primary cancers in the gastrointestinal tract or the reproductive tract. And we have targeted two specific indications, colorectal cancer and ovarian cancer. These are very common cancers that metastasize in the peritoneum. And these uh, indications we have pursued in phase one and two A trials uh, with a 24 month follow up to follow how well these patients avoid cancer recurrence. And these results have been presented. We had 15 months data presented in June and we are just about to present 18 month data. The safety aspects of, from these trials are excellent, and we also have a very positive efficacy signal. And this we want to try in phase 2B trials going forward. So yeah, finishing on the clinical development and your plans going forward, what are they? Yes, uh, we will now close the recruitment in the phase 1, 2A trials, uh, and we will focus on starting phase 2B trials. And these trials will be conducted both in the US and Europe. 
and the timing, we think that we are able to start these trials in the first half of next year. Well, we look forward to hearing more about this and thank you so much for coming, Anders. Thank you so much.